the 22 millimeter socket, let's remove all these caps that hold on the center cap for your lug nuts. Set this aside, and then with a 22 millimeter socket as well, go ahead and remove all eight of your lug nuts, and then we'll remove the wheel. Before we go further, I'm going to take a pry bar, stick it in here, and just try to compress the pistons of the caliper a little bit. That'll make it easier to take this off. With a 17 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove the two bolts that hold the caliper onto the bracket. get this top one off first. And with these off, take your caliper, slide it off of the caliper bracket and the pads, set it on top of the leaf spring so it doesn't put any pressure on your brake hose. Now you can remove the pads, just slide them out of the bracket this one's a little bit stuck, so I'm going to use a pry bar. There we go. Now with an 18 millimeter socket, I want to remove these two bolts that mount the bracket onto the knuckle. So I'm going to do this one with my air gun, but this one, obviously I can't fit anything but a hand tool in there. So. so I'm going to go ahead and take this one out first but I will leave it in a few threads. That way I can hold the bracket in while I take off the top. Go ahead and break this free. <clears throat> Helps if you have a long ratchet or a breaker bar that you can get in here. You can either use a ratcheting wrench, a regular wrench, or a 3 8 drive ratchet. Usually it'll fit in here. And you can take the bolt all the way out. Once you get it loose enough, you can do this by hand. Just make sure you don't get your tool stuck in between here. That's not going to be fun. Take the bracket off. Take your rotor off. The next thing I want to do is spray some brake parts cleaner all over to get rid of all the dust, brake dust and debris, sand, anything that might be here so I can have a nice clean working area, including and obviously including back here by the parking brake shoes because these collect a lot of dust over time. Next, I'm going to pull the axle with these 19 millimeter bolts. Once you remove those, the axle comes out and then we can move the hub away and then we can do our job. So, like I said, 19 millimeter socket, remove all of these. Mine had a bunch of gasket maker on them, so I'm just going to remove all of that, make sure the threads are nice and clean for installation. I'm going to tap this with a hammer to hopefully break it free. There we go. Gear oil will come out, so I have a drain pan underneath. Slowly and gently remove the axle, support it so that you don't ruin any seals. Okay. Going to use a brand new razor blade to scrape things off. Of course, try to scrape towards the outside, not the inside.
scrape away any debris that might have got in here. Now we have to remove this large uh, nut that's in here. You can see, but it's locked in with a C-clip. So with a large pick, I'm gonna try to, but it's locked, but it's locked in with a little snap ring, uh, lock ring thing. So I'm just gonna take a pick and try to pick this out of here. There we go. With a magnet, go ahead and pull this locking pin out that sits here at the top. And then I'm gonna count the threads to know how many threads in this ring was so that I can put it back exactly the way it was before. I have five visible threads here, so that's what I'm gonna go by. And I'm actually gonna mark the ring right here so that I know this is the top. Gonna use a permanent marker and just make a line right here. And that way I know that this is the top facing towards the outside. So with my pick, I'm gonna go ahead and just back this off. There it is. Now grab your hub assembly and wiggle it. Now that this is loose with a pry bar, go ahead and pry this off. There we go. Remove your hub assembly with the bearings. Let's uh, just start removing these shoes. I'm gonna First, take off these locking pins, and I'm just gonna grab it and twist it, remove the spring part of it. Do the same on both sides. There we go. It's always easier to uh, remove those than to install. I'm gonna spin this adjuster to bring the shoes in closer together. I grab onto this adjuster here with some locking pliers. Hopefully use this to kind of pull it away. Just like this. This will bring the shoes closer. It'll allow me to unlock this spring. There we go. Take the adjuster out, set this aside. And now at the top here, you're left with this large spring, which careful, because it's very uh, stiff. But at this point, you don't, even have to, you don't even have to unhook it. You can just remove it, leave it hooked up like this. And now we can remove this parking brake lever. So I'm gonna remove this e-brake lever by pulling out on it first. I'm just gonna try to unlodge the boot as well. And the boot I'm going to replace at the same time, of course. And then if I just pry backwards on this, I should be able to release it from this parking brake cable. The spring on the cable is what's basically locking it in. I'm going to take a pry bar and just pry the spring away. There we go. That popped off. At this point, you can pull the lever out with the boot and everything and discard it. Let's start by putting the boot in first. You can help it along with a little pocket screwdriver. Just make sure you don't tear it. 
and it has this little ridge here that actually has to lock into the backing plate. That's what seals everything up. I put a little bit of grease on this just so it can slide through the boot easier. And there we go. It poked out the other side. I'm gonna leave this just like this for now. So the deal here is uh, my e-brake cable broke and it wasn't broken earlier, but it's broken now. It's completely rotted away. But basically you'll have your spring here and the end of the brake cable here. And you just have to reverse the procedure of when we uninstalled this. So to uninstall it, we swooped it outwards. In this case, the spring is probably gonna sit somewhere around here. So you just wanna take this and kind of hook it over like that. Bring the spring over and that's it. That's locked in. That's all you need. Um, sometimes you need maybe a little pry bar to pry the spring back, but usually um, uninstalling it is easier than installing it because for installing it, like I said, all you have to do is uh, hook it around and then it's attached. So I want to grease up in here a little bit where the uh, shoes are going to sit. Usually that prevents noise when you apply the parking brake. Do this to both sides. You don't need a lot. You actually definitely don't want a lot because you don't want it to start getting everywhere else once it gets heated up and potentially softens up. And uh, I'll put a little bit in here, again, for some noise reduction. And don't forget to put it on these raised areas that are all around the backing shield. This will also prevent the e-brake shoes from scraping dry as they are applied. And sometimes that'll make squeaking noises, which are not what you want. And like I said, you don't need a lot. One last thing to clean up and lubricate before installation is the adjuster. My threads are actually in good condition, so I'm just gonna apply some grease to them. You don't need a lot of grease, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this little star wheel and work the grease through the, through the threads. If yours is rusted or even seized up because of rust, you would want to either get a new one or um, unseize it. Soak it in some rust penetrant and then just work it back and forth until it unseizes and then obviously clean the rust off the threads. But this one, like I said, is not too bad at all. So I just put some grease on it. We'll bring it back down to where it's completely bottomed out. And then just as a little reserve of grease basically for these threads, I like to take this part, the non-threaded area, and just put a little bit of grease on the side there. That'll usually keep it working for a while. Perfect. So now I want to take these shoes, I'm going to go like this, and then pull this one up and over, just like that. It'll be easiest to do it with the leverage of the shoe, as opposed to removing the spring and trying to do that after. So next I want to open up the shoes at the bottom. I'll slide my adjuster in. I know there's a spring that goes in there too. I'll put that on in a second. But at this point, I can uh, set this adjuster into place just like that. And then now that the pads are, or the uh, shoes are being held in place, I can pull them away a little bit, get my spring back here. And then with a pick or really anything that you have that you don't throw on the floor, and then with a pick, I'm going to grab the spring from the backside. This is a fairly weak spring. It's not nothing crazy. Uh, I'm basically just going to aim for this hole over here. Spring is almost in. There we go. Let's put the pins through the backing shield and then um, reattach these little locking clips. So the way you do that, you want to make sure that your pin is facing. It's parallel with the slot on the locking clip. And then you can use a screwdriver, but I sometimes prefer to use locking pliers and use those to squeeze in on the spring part.
slide the pin through as I press it. Now let's do the same thing to the other side. Slide the pin through. And let's resecure it with this little clip. take the hub assembly with the bearings, slide it all on. There we go. Work that grease in a little bit and press it over all the way in. In order to ensure that it's seated, try to pull it back out. It shouldn't come off very easily. For me, it took a little bit of force. There we go. Everything feels nice and smooth. Now let's put this locking ring on, which is also what secures your bearings and the hub and everything. I'm just gonna use this pick to drive it in. Makes it a little faster. And now, at this point, you would want a, a special tool. It looks like this. That drops right down into these slots and you use this to turn it. You wanna to torque this to 52 foot-pounds. Once it's tight, See if you can move the bearing around a little bit. If it's too tight, that's normal because then you have to back it off and move the bearing or move the, turn the hub with it backed off a little bit so that you can seat those bearings in. And then the final adjustment should just be finger tight. Like you should tighten it until you can just stop turning it with your fingers and that's it. These should not be torqued down. Otherwise you will crush the bearings and ruin them very, very fast. Okay, so I used my tool, made this pretty tight. And it's pretty hard to turn this bearing now, or the hub, and that's normal. But you do want to try and turn it a few times, and that'll seat the bearings properly. Typically, you'd want to go the other direction. There we go. And it should get very slightly looser. Not The nut shouldn't back off, but turning it should be a little bit easier. So at this point, we want to use our tool, back this off until it is loose and then we'll tighten it finger tight. All right, so I loosened it up with my tool. I just snugged it up a little so that I can kind of gauge the tightness of it. And this is now loose enough to where I can literally spin it freely with my pick. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and basically you just wanna go until the first hole lines up. That's that one over there. So do this. And at this point, you have this little locking pin in here, which is essential. This is what's gonna prevent this from backing off. And then of course, to lock the locking pin in, you use the snap ring. Grab a little pick to help drive this on all the way. Just find a, uh, a thread that it wants to sit on and uh, just follow that thread all around. Make sure it is fully seated. Okay, that looks good. Give this a spin. It spins easily. That's perfect. So ideally you would want to put a gasket here. I'm pretty sure usually it's a paper gasket. I don't have one. You can use RTV and but you just want to make sure you use very very little very thin layer. I'm gonna put some on here in between the uh, bolt holes and then I'll use my clean glove. You don't want an oily glove that defeats the purpose of the RTV sticking. And I'm just gonna spread it around to make it a nice even coat of RTV. Again, if you put too much, well, it's gonna squish out, get in the middle there and it's just not gonna be great. It's not, might not even make a very good seal. So I'm just gonna go around everywhere and apply it evenly and then we will put the axle in and before I tighten these bolts because I'm using RTV usually you can just snug them right up and torque them to spec but because I'm using 
this gasket maker, I want to wait for it to harden a little bit before I actually do the full torque. So you'll see me putting the bolts in, bottoming them out, and maybe giving them a little snug with, and I won't torque them. Uh, I'm going to wait about half an hour before the um, RTV sets in, dries up a little bit, and then I will go to the full torque spec. At this point, you want to make sure that your axle shaft is clean, free of debris. Of course, I cleaned up this surface here too, and it is ready to be installed. Slide it through, support it as you slide it in. And over here, we'll have to kind of find where the hole is in the uh, differential. There we go and at this point there we go you want to be gentle on the last step because you don't want to push all the gears inside and uh, kind of dislodge them okay let's get some bolts in here line up your bolt holes start in your bolts I'm gonna start this one on all the way that way it'll hold the axle into place start this one on all the way and once two are in completely then uh, Basically everything else will line up just fine. So let's get them all in. If your threads are dirty, go ahead and clean them up. I cleaned some of them up because they were a little bit uh, dirty with the old gasket on them and someone had already put some RTV on here. All right, let's give these a quick snug, and then I will wait, like I said, to fully torque it. So snugging these up, I'm going to go in a cross pattern, and I'm holding my ratchet by the head of the ratchet, so I'm not applying a lot of torque. And the reason I'm going in a cross pattern is to fully seat the RTV evenly. Even if you're using a pre-made gasket, it's good to go in a cross pattern to squish it down evenly. So I'm going to leave it like this for 20 minutes, half an hour. Then I'll come back and do a uh, full, full pass with the torque wrench all around. So it's been about half an hour and I want to torque these. If you have the 10 and a half rear end, then you want to torque them to 115 foot-pounds. If you have the 11 and a half rear end, you want to torque them to 136 foot-pounds. So pick your appropriate torque spec depending on your application. And like I said, I'm going to go in a cross pattern. I'm going to hold the hub with a pry bar. That's all of them. I'm going to go around in a circle, just double check them. Okay, they're all tight. Now I want to clean up the hub surface where the rotor mounts on. It's basically rust free completely. I just want to clean off the uh, remaining potential grease here with some brake parts cleaner. I'm going to clean off the studs too. I noticed some of them have grease on them, which they're not supposed to. Um, all right, and then I'll just coat it with some anti-seize. That way it doesn't rust in the future. Put some anti-seize here, just a thin layer. I'm going to spread it out, but I just want to apply some everywhere. And then uh, I'll just go around. Try not to get it on the lug studs, if possible. And 
try to get it on this ridge right here on the hub part where the rotor sits because a lot of times it will seize up on there. If it's going to seize up anywhere, it's most likely going to be right there on that ridge. Let's take our rotor, slide it on. I do want to mention if you have a lot of rust buildup inside there where it mounts onto the hub, you want to go ahead and clean that off. Mine is in pretty good condition, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to slide this on all the way. And at this point, you would want to adjust your parking brake shoes. Otherwise, they will be useless and do nothing when you engage your parking brake. And at this point, they are pretty far off. I don't feel them touching at all. Uh, for parking brake shoes, not drum brakes, parking brake shoes, you want them to have very, very minimal uh, friction. So like they're just barely touching and then they will grab once you engage the parking brake. So the easiest way to adjust them at this point is to just take the rotor right off and go underneath, adjust that star uh, adjuster as opposed to going through the back in the backing plate. You can do that later if you want, but that'll be easier for small adjustments later down the line. So I'm gonna take a pry bar. You can take a screwdriver or whatever works best for you and just adjust this to basically expand the shoes. Go a couple more turns. All right, let's see what this did. I'll slide the rotor on. That actually feels pretty good. Um, maybe you can hear it too. I can hear that the e-brake shoes are touching just a little bit, so this is exactly where I'm going to leave them. If for some reason I need to adjust further, I can always do that through the back of the backing shield later on down the line, but for now this is exactly where I want to leave them. Let's put on the caliper bracket, line it up with the two bolt holes, and slide in the bolts. There's one. Let's bottom these out, and then we'll torque them to 122 foot-pounds. one. If you wanted to put anything on these bolts, you should put thread locker, definitely not anti-seize or grease, just as a side note. And that's two. Let's get the pads in. If for some reason your pads are having a hard time sliding in, it's probably because you have rust buildup in there, in which case you'd have to just clean it up with a wire brush or sand it down or whatever, and uh, make sure you put some grease in there if needed. Do the same with the sliders. My sliders are good, but if it needs to be greased, if they need to be greased up, go ahead and do that. Now take your caliper, slide it over the pads and over the bracket. Make sure it all lines up. The uh, slider pins have like a straight cutout here that basically lines up with the flat part on the caliper. Grab your two mounting bolts. Slide those in, bottom them out, and then torque them to 80 foot-pounds. Okay, if your slider spins like this, you can grab it with some pliers and hold it still. That's one. And that's two. Perfect. Let's put the wheel back on. Put all your lug nuts on, bottom them out, and then torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Just double check them all one more time.
Don't forget about this cover if you have one. Again, 22 millimeter socket, just like we uh, did to take it off, except for this one. Don't use a, an impact gun or anything like that on it because these plastic inserts, they strip out really fast and then they won't grip and then your cover is gonna go flying down the road. So just do these by hand, make them nice and snug and you should be all set.